Shalom, shalom. I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Wamlak Yahushai. All right, all honor, glory, and praises to the one and only true living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to his only begotten son, the king, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who the world calls Jesus Christ. All right, and I'm going to get into the book of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 13, right? Those who despise the word of the Lord shall be destroyed, right? And the curse of the Lord remains in, in the house of the wicked. Right? So let's get it. Proverbs 13 and verse 13. It reads, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Right? So if you despise the word, right? You forsake it. You disrespect the word of God. Right? And so you're going to be destroyed. Right? Let's go to the book of Proverbs 28 and verse 4. Because if you despise in the word, therefore you'll be forsaken the laws, right? And if you've forsaken the laws, therefore you'll be do, doing contrary to the law. Well, then, therefore you will be in sin, right? Let's get it, Proverbs 28 and 4. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them, right? So if you forsake the law, now you're despising the word. The Lord said you praise the wicked. You're not praising him, Right? You know, like a lot of these uh these pastors in these churches, right? They don't know that they, they're praising the wicked because they're forsaking the law and they're despising the word, right? They, they're in there teaching that the laws are done away with, right? So ultimately, they're praising the wicked, right? With their mouth, they talk a good one, right? But, but their heart is far from the most high. It says, but such as keep the law, contend with them. Right? Because those who keep the law, statute, commandments, right? And the faith that Yahweh Shai Mashiach, they contend with those who forsake the law, right? Righteous rebuke, right? Rebuking our people that they may repent and come back to the Father. You see that? Let's get the book of uh, 1 John, chapter 3, and verse 4. Because if you despise in the word, you forsaken. The laws, you'll be doing contrary to the laws, which means, therefore, you'll be in sin because if you're doing contrary to the law, therefore, you're breaking the law, right? First John 3 and 4, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law, right? So if you commit sin, you're breaking the law, right? For sin is the breaking of the law. You see that? So if you've forsaken the law, you despise in the word, therefore, you'll be in sin. Right? You're doing contrary to the law. Right? And if you're doing that, the Lord said you, you praise the wicked. Right? Let's get that in the book of 1 John. Chapter 3 and verse 8. And it reads, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So he said, He that committed sin is of the devil. Right? Like you just said, those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Right? So you're of the devil. If you're doing contrary to these laws that your commandments, you're breaking them, you're despising the word. Right? Let's go to the book of John. Chapter 8 and verse 44. John 8 and 44. And it reads, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. You see that in the truth is what? These laws that your commandments. Look at Psalms 119 and 142. Right? Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. You see that? So the Lord said, you know, you forsake the law, you praise the wicked. You're of your father, the devil. You see that? You're not praising him. Right? Let's just, just put a piece of real quick. Book of Matthew. Chapter uh, Salakia, Book of Matthew. Let me find this precept. Book of Matthew. Um, 15. Verse 8. Alright, this is what a lot of people do. Matthew 15 and 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their, with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Right, especially in these churches, even people that's not in churches, they 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 draw nigh to the Most High with their mouth. 
you know, saying that they love God, right? You know, and, and they have faith and, and they're saved by grace and all these things. He said, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, right? Their heart, their mind is far from the Lord, right? Because as soon as you bring out these law, statute, commandments, they despise and they forsake them. So who are they really worshiping? The Lord just told us, right? They, they praise the wicked. They're of their father, the devil. It says, but in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men, right? They teach in the doctrines and, and the commandments of men, right? Instead of the law, statute, and commandments of the Most High God. You see that? Well, that's what a lot of people do, and they don't understand that they, they're praising the wicked by doing so, right? Let's go to the book of um, 1 Samuel. Chapter 2 and verse 30. 1 Samuel 2 and 30, and it reads, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father shall walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, I will honor. And them that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. You see that? So the Lord said those who honor him, those are the ones he's going to honor. Those who are keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, right? And, and, and keeping the faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach, the ones that the Lord is going to honor, right? He said, and they that despise me, right, shall be lightly esteemed, right? It means what? You're going to be of low value to him, right? He's going to have little to no respect for you, meaning what? The Most High cannot use you. You see that? Let's go to the book of Malachi. Book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 2. And it reads, If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yeah, I have cursed them already, because you do not lay it to heart. You see that? So the Most High said he already cursed our blessings, right? Those blessings that you find in the book of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, right? He already cursed those blessings. He said, because we don't lay it to heart. He already knew that our people was a hard head and stiff necked people, right? And we know about that. When Moses brought us up out of Egypt, our people was doing nothing but complaining and murmuring, right? Talking about they, they wish they, they would have just, uh, you know, stayed in Egypt and died. You know what I'm saying? Our people is, is a hard head people. So the Lord said he already cursed our blessings, right? So in order to get those blessings, what do you have to do? You have to overcome these curses. How do you overcome these curses? By keeping these laws that your commandments of the Most High God. Right? You see that? Let's go to the book of uh, Deuteronomy 28. Book of Deuteronomy 28. And verse... Um, I'm going to read verse 1. These are the blessings you can read down 1 through 14. And then I'm going to jump into some curses. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass... If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Right? So we, obviously, we, can, we, can, we can clearly see that um, we're not above all nations right now. Right? We're actually at the bottom. Right? We're serving our enemies, like the Lord said we were going to do. You see that? Because we, we wanted to be hard-headed. We wanted to despise and forsake the laws of the Most High God, right? So we're at the bottom of the barrel, right? When we're supposed to be on top. But clearly we're not on top, right? Let's go to verse 15. It reads, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. This is going into the curses, right, that he was talking about. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You see that? So the Lord said all these curses are going to come upon us and overtake us if we didn't hearken and, and diligently, you know, and, and keep his law, statutes, and commandments. You see that? Which we clearly see that we're under the curses. Right? Let's get a few curses. Let's jump to verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Right, and we clearly see that we're cursed in the city, right? Our people's all drugged out, right? Uh, uh, getting killed by the cops, killing each other, right? We're cursed in the city, right? Smitten with madness, you know? And we're supposed to, we're supposed to be the greatest people on earth, but right now we're at the bottom, right? 
It's saying, cursed shall thou be in shall thou be in the field. Right? Our people was cursed, cursed in the cotton fields, right? The tobacco fields, right? You know, when we was in slavery, right? Even to this very day, we still curse in the fields, right? When you drive up north, you go through the grapevine and all that. Who you see out there in the fields, you still see our people to this day picking fruit or whatever it is that they have out there in them fields, right? Getting paid the minimum, right? To give to 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 our enemies so that they can put in their grocery stores and make make the top dollar for it. You see that? So we curse, right? I'm going to jump to verse um, 25. And it reads, The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And thou shalt be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. You see that? So the Lord says he, he's going to cause us to be smitten before our enemies, right? And we see that happening all the time. Our people getting killed by the cops, right? Smitten by our enemies, right? Going into these damn, uh, these, um, you know, these Moabites and these Ammonites, you know, these Asian stores and, 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 and you know, they're hitting, hitting the women, you know, all, all, all types of madness is going on. It says, thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. Right. You got our people that, you know, swear up and down that they're the toughest gangster. You know what I'm saying? They out there ready to put in work on their own brother. Right. But as soon as a cop hit the block, you know, it could be one cop by himself. And there you go. Everybody scatters. You see that? He says, and shall be removed into all kingdoms of the earth, right? Our people has been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, right? And it's still getting scattered now, right? With this modern day uh, uh, gentrification where they're moving all these heathens and these Edomites into our neighborhoods and forcing us to move out, right? I'm going to jump to another verse, verse 28. It says, the Lord shall smite thee with madness and with blindness and astonishment of heart, Right? And the Lord has smitten our people with madness. You see our people out there strung out on drugs, yelling, screaming, you know, uh, uh, just all, all, all manners, all matters of, 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 of wickedness and madness going on. Right? The, the Lord has smitten our people. He said in blindness, right? That's a, literally blindness and spiritually blindness. Our people can't see the way, right? They, they can't find the truth when it's right there before your eyes. Almost everybody has a Bible in their home. And yet they don't pick it up and read, right? They're blinded. They go seeking to intermeddle with all different sorts of, of, of wisdom and doctrines and philosophies and religions, right? And they can never seem to find the, the way, right? Because the Lord has caused that to happen. He has blinded them spiritually. It says an astonishment of heart, right? An astonishment of, of heart. We're in amazement to these other nations. Why? Because all nations know who we are. Right? They all know that we're the true Hebrew Israelites, that, the, that we're the people of the Most High God, right? But what? To them, it's an amazement because they see us and they say, well, this people is supposed to be the people of God. But look at them at the bottom, you know, drugged out, right? Killing each other, you know, selling drugs to each other, right? And all, the, all, and all types of wickedness that our people do. You see, verse 29 says, and thou shalt grope at noonday as, a blind, as the blind gropeth in darkness. Right, because a blind man can't see, so he gropes around to fill his way, right? And he says, "And thou shalt not prosper in thy way." So he said, "We're gonna, we're gonna grope around at noonday as a as a blind man groping the darkness, right? Like we just read in the previous verse, trying to find the way, but seem, but but never seem to find it, right? It says, "Thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore." Right, and we're clearly getting oppressed, right, on a daily basis by our by our oppressors, by our enemies. Right by the so-called white man in, in these other nations, you see that it says, "Um, and and thou shalt be uh, oppressed and spoiled every more." Right when something's spoiled, it means it's rotten, it's no good. Right, and and no man shall save thee. You see that nobody's going to be able to save us from that because once the Lord puts something on you, only He can remove that. Right, only He can remove these curses off of you. Therefore, you have to come back to the Father and, and, and love the Father and keep these lost at your commandments, you know. I'm going to go to verse uh, 30. It says, Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her, right? And this was happening in slavery time, right? When someone was engaged engaged to a woman, right? And a slave master would come and sleep with, sleep with this woman, right? And it also happens today, right? Where, where Esau... 
he, he actually pays our people to promote all this wickedness in their music, right? To normalize it, right? So when our people hear it, they think it's a normal thing to sleep with, sleep with, their, with, their, with their brother's wife, right? With their best friend's wife, right? Or, or someone that he's engaged to, you know? And, and this is what happens on a daily basis, right? Which is called what? Adultery. You see that? It says, uh, thou shalt build an house and shall not dwell therein. And we see this happening on a daily basis, right? We build up America, right? And we don't own anything in it. You see that? Um, you clearly see our people building up these, these big houses, these apartment buildings, and they don't even have a room in the house or the apartment building to sleep in. You see that? They're building it, getting paid. You know, to them, it may seem like a lot. They may be making 20, 30 bucks an hour, but that's chump change. You see that to the person who, who actually is going to own that building and rent it out and, and, you know, make twice, if not 10 times as much as he paid, you know, the person to build that. You see what I'm saying? He's going to, he's going to continue to prosper and make top dollar for, you know, what is his. But we're getting paid the minimum and we don't even have uh, nothing to call by our name. You see that? It says, thou shalt plant a vineyard and shall not gather the grapes thereof. Right. Like we just read, you know, you go up north or, you know, you, you see the fields. We see our people out there, you know, picking the fruits and all type of stuff. Right. They're planting these. The, they plant it in these vineyards. But when it's time to gather, you know, the, 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 the fruits thereof. Right. They're not taking that to their grocery store. They're not selling that to make a profit for themselves. Right. They're doing that for our enemies. Right. For the so-called white man to put in his grocery stores. Right. And sell it and make his money for it. Right? Why, why he's paying our people the minimum. You see that? Let's get on verse 32. It says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Right? And we see this happen. This was happening in slavery. When they would come in and split the families, right? And give the children to another slave master. And this is also happening to this very day, which is what they call uh, child protective services. Right? They come and take your children. Right? And you're not able to do anything about it, right? It says, And thine eyes shall look and fail with a longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand, right? So you're going to be there when they come to your door, right? They're going to take your children, and you're going to be able to do nothing about it. Because when they come, they're coming with the police, right? And if you act the fool, you act up, they're going to try to lock you up, right? And there's going to be no might in our hands. You see that? Let's get verse 37. It says, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, right? So we have become an astonishment, an amazement, right? You know, people just look at us, you know, like uh, entertainment, you know what I'm saying? They're astonished because they know who we are, and they can't believe that we still haven't figured out who we are as a people, right? And a lot of us have, and, you know, the brothers out there street teaching and, you know, wisdom is crying out. You know, a lot of our people reject that, you know? And that's an astonishment. You know, a proverb, right? A proverb is something when they say you want to hide something from, you know, a so-called uh, uh, black man, put it in a book, right? You know, and, and they have all types of proverbs that they put upon us, right? There's another proverb that they that they use, right? Back in the day, and even, even today, they still play that song on the ice cream truck, right? Called, uh, the song is called uh, Nigger Love Watermelon, Right? So they try to they try to make mockery of us, right? It says in a byword, right? Among all nations where the Lord shall lead thee. A byword would be something like African American, right? Black, uh, Mexican, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, right? Jamaican, Haitian. These are all bywords. You're not gonna find any of these words in the Bible. The Lord called us the children of Israel, you so called black, so called uh um, Mexican, so-called Native Indians of, of indigenous or Negro descent. That's who we are. We're the real people of the Bible. We're the Hebrew Israelites, right? I'm going to jump down to verse... Um, let me give verse like, yeah, 43. And it reads, The stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. You see that? So the stranger, right, the heathens, right, that are, that are, that are here um, amongst us, here in our captivity, right? They come from, from their homelands, right? They can't even read or, or read and write or speak English, but they come here, right? And they get above us very high. 
right? They come here and, and within a month or two, they have a business, right? They have a, a big house. They have the cars, right? And, and the Lord said that was going to happen, right? They get above us very high and we, and we come down very low. You see that? We at the bottom. We got to come to them to get, to get um, you know, our food, our water, our clothing, right? Our housing. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail. You see that? So he lends to us. That's if we can even get a loan. You know, a lot of our people go to these banks and try to get a loan and they reject us. You see that? He says, thou shalt not lend to him, right? Because we was meant to be set up and be on top. And we were supposed to be the rulers and the kings and the priests and the, and the, and the princesses and the, and, and of this world, right? We are supposed to be set on high, but our people forsake and they despise the word. So we got set down very low. Say, he shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail. You see, you see that? <clears throat> Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So these curses, wherever we go, they're going to be upon us, right? And they're going to pursue us. They're going to overtake us until they destroy us, right? There's no running from it. No matter where you go in the world, right? These curses are going to follow. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. You see that? Because we don't want to keep the law, statute, commandments. The Lord said these curses are going to pursue us until it destroys us, right? There's no way around it. You see that? Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So these curses um, are upon the children of Israel for a sign and for a wonder, right? Just like when you go to uh, uh, Walmart, Target, right? Uh, uh, um, um, you know, uh, wherever you go shopping or buying food, you know what it is because there's a sign on there letting you know to identify as a marker what this place is. You see that? So these curses are an identifier, a marker, a sign to let us know who the children of Israel is to this very day. Right? It says, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So because we don't want to serve the most high God, right, with joyfulness and gladness of heart, right, for the abundance of all things, because the Lord, he, he would have gave us everything we needed, right? But because we despise and forsake this loss, the Lord said, therefore, we're going to serve our enemies, right? What enemies is this talking about? Talking about all these heathen nations. You can re read about our enemies in the book of uh, Psalms 83, right? He said, uh, and hunger, right? When you're hungry, you got to go to these grocery stores, right, these, these markets, if you, even if you go to a fast food restaurant, right? Um, we have to serve our enemies for that. We have to go to them to get our food, right? And even if our, one of our people do own one of these establishments, right? They still have to go to their enemy to get their, their products, right? They still have to pay taxes. You see that? They still have to pay rent. You see that? So ultimately, it all goes back to serving the enemy. It says in thirst, when you want water that freely falls from the sky, right? You have to go to them, to our enemies, to get something to drink, whether it's water, you know, um, uh, alcohol, beverage, right, juice, whatever the case may be, we have to go to them to get it. And again, if our people do own any of these things, they still got to go pay rent, pay taxes and get their products from the so-called white man. It says in the nakedness, right, when you want clothing, right, the Nikes, the Jordans, the Reeboks, right, you know, uh, uh, whatever, whatever the case may be, any matter of, uh, ma uh, matter of clothing, we have to go to them to get it. Right to our enemies, and if our people do own one of these store, uh, clothing stores, right, a shoe store, right, they still have to go buy their products from our enemies. They still have to go get the material from our enemies, right. They still have to pay rent and taxes to the enemy. You see that? So we're still serving them at the end of the day, and in one of all things, you want a driver's license, right, passport, right. You want to open a business, right. You got to go ask permission for all things. He says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck till he have destroyed thee. Right. In slavery, they had a yoke of iron upon our necks. Right. But our people so mentally destroyed now to where they didn't took the they didn't took the yoke of iron off. And our people so destroyed, not realizing that we're in modern day slavery. Right. Our people so destroyed to where you tell them that they're the Hebrew Israelites, that they're the true Jews of the Bible. Right. You so-called blacks, uh, uh, so-called Hispanic and native Indians of, of Negro or indigenous descent. So destroyed that when you tell them that they don't want to hear it. 
They want to fight you. They want to slap a Bible at your hand. They want to tell you what about the white man. You see that? That's how destroyed our people are. That they don't even want to hear or believe that they're their true people or the most high God. You see that? Let's get, um, let me jump down to verse uh, 54. I'm just jumping through a few curses. You know, you can always go back and read through the whole chapter. Deuteronomy 28 and 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. You see that? So the, back, in the, back in the ancient days, our people was tender and delicate towards one another. You know, they'll see a brother and, you know, ask him how his day's going, how's he doing, you know, if he needs anything, you know. And, but now we walk up and down the street, we see our brothers and it's like we sizing each other up. Right. We banging on each other. Where you from? Where you live at? Right. You know where you at? You see that? Ready to ready to kill our brothers. Ready to ready to fight our brothers on sight. Right? It says his eye shall be evil towards his brother. Right? That that goes into gangbanging. And towards the wife of his bosom, right? Going into what? Uh, domestic violence, right? Hating your wife. Right? And it says, and towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, right? Men, men having, you know, five, six different baby mamas having children, you know, and leaving them. Right? These are the curses that the Lord said was going to be upon our people. For, for despising and forsaking his law, statutes, and commandments. Let's get on um, verse 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which will not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil towards her husband, right? On the contrary side, right? The woman, um, domestic violence, the woman, uh, you know, hitting her husband or thinking that she's the man of the house. You see that? Having an evil eye towards her husband, hating her husband, Right? And towards her son and towards her daughter. You see that? Fighting and arguing with her children. Kicking them out the house. You know? These are the curses that the Lord said was going to happen. You know, for us. Um, you know, for, uh, despising and, for, and forsaking his laws. You see that? Let me get on. Um, verse 64. It says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even unto the other, right? We got scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. And there thou shalt serve other gods, right? Which we clearly see our people is dealing with Catholicism, Christianity, right? Serving a white Jesus, you know, um, Arab's religion, you know, being a Muslim, right? And all different types of, uh, of madness out there, right? It says, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. You see that? So the Lord ha has place these curses upon us, right? But um, I want to get um, Proverbs. Let me go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, and verse 16. And it reads, The man that wandereth out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So if you wander out the way of understanding, right, um, when wisdom's crying out, right, and you want to despise and forsake it, the Lord says you're going to remain in the congregation of the dead. You're going to be out here like a, like a zombie, right? Not knowing who you are all your life. Thinking that you're a so-called black man, right? Which no one is black, right? It's a, we're, we're different shades of brown, right? You know, you're going to be out here thinking that you're a so-called Mexican, right? A Puerto Rican, right? And all these different bywords, right? You're not going to come to your, your true nationality and heritage of the Most High God, right? You're going to remain in the congregation of the dead, you see that? You're not going to know true repentance, you know, and who salvation is really for. You're not going to know that the one and only true living God is, is only your God and none else. You see that? Let's get the book of Proverbs 14 and 2. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 2. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. You see, so he that walk in uprightness, you know, they fear the Lord. And when you fear the Lord, ultimately what? You get knowledge, understanding, and the wisdom of the Heavenly Father, right? But he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. You see that? If you despise the word, you're going to be destroyed. And these curses are going to remain in your household, right? Let's get the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. <clears throat> Salakia, in verse 33. And it reads, Proverbs 3 and 33. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. You see, so the curse of the Lord, it's in the house of the wicked. You see, so those who are wicked, right, those who, 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 who praise uh, 
you know, the devil, right? Those who want to continue to forsake and despise the laws of the Most High God, that curse that we just, all those curses we just read in Deuteronomy 28, right? They're going to remain in your household, right? You're going to forever be going through something and never have peace because you don't want to come back to the Most High God, right? Right? And in spirit and in truth and sincerely in praising the Lord willingly, right? Because you truly love him. And having the faith in his son, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. These curses are going to remain in your household. You see that? Let's get the book of Malachi 2 and 2 again. Book of Malachi chapter 2 and 2. It says, if you will not lay it to heart. So like if you will not hear and if you will not lay it to heart. To give glory unto my name, said the Lord of hosts. I will even send a curse upon you. Right, those curses we just read about in Deuteronomy 28. And I will curse your blessings, right? Those blessings in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. Yeah, I have cursed them already because ye do not lay it to heart. Right? So our blessings have been cursed already. We're under the curses right now as a nation. Right? Let's get the book of um. Let me get the book of Salakia. Uh Zechariah. Get the book of Zechariah, chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 1 through 5, right? Book of Zechariah, chapter 1 through 5. And it reads, Then I turned, Salakia, real quick. Book of Zechariah 5, 1 through 5, and it, and it reads, Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying rope. So this is Zechariah having a vision. He said he looked up and saw a flying rope, right? And when you look up this word rope in the Hebrew, Right, it gives you eight four zero three nine, which means row, book, writing, right? Which we know is what? These laws, right? These laws that your commandments, the curses with therein, right? It says, And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying row. The length thereof is twenty cubics, and the breadth thereof is ten cubics. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that go forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that still it shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. And I will bring, bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. You see that? So just like he said in Proverbs 3 and 33, the curse of the Lord remains in the house of the wicked. You see that? He said the same thing here, right? Let's get on um, Book of Psalms. Book of Psalms 147, in verse 15, and it reads, 147 and 15, He sendeth forth his commandment upon, upon earth. His word runneth swiftly. You see, so his commandment, his word, he sent it forth upon the whole earth. And those who despise and forsake it, right, the curse is going to enter therein into his house, right? Just as we just read, right? Let's get the book of um, Sirach, right? It's the last precept of pool, right? Because ultimately, what, what does the Most High want us to do? He wants us to repent and come back to his law, statutes, and commandments, right? The Lord wants us to come back to him. You know, let's get the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, right? Chapter 35. And I'm going to start at verse uh, three. It says to depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord. So the Lord wants us to depart from wickedness, right? How do we depart from wickedness? By repenting, right? Acts 3 and 19. Right? Psalms 19 and 7. Right? Acknowledging our sins. Right? Book of Psalms 30, 32 and verse 5. Right? Book of Sirach, I believe, for uh, chapter 4 and 26. You know? We have, to, we have to put off that wickedness. Right? Because if you forsake and you despise the, the word, you know, you're praising the wicked. You got to put that off and come back to the Father. Verse 3 again. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord. So you want to please the Father. And to forsake unrighteousness is a is a propitiation. 
You see that? So we want to, we want to, you know, please the Lord. You know, we want to do the things that are pleasing in his eyes. Right. You know, and, and, and keep these law, statutes and commandments to the best of our ability and, and keep the faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Right. But Lord willing, this video is edifying to at least one brother or sister. To the next video, Shalom.